So welcome back friends to the shop. We're gonna be doing battery tenders today. I'll show you just a couple tricks, uh, a way if you have like multiple uh, motorcycles or lawnmowers or different things, uh, how you can get away with only buying one battery tender and uh, uh, quickly, quickly swap everything over uh, without, uh, save, save you a little bit of money. So um, come on, hang out, we'll, uh, we'll get these hooked up and I'll uh, show you what I know about it anyway. If you're not familiar with battery tenders, they're, they're just basically these, these little units here focus for me, uh, that keep your batteries topped off. Um, sometimes when I do this stuff that some guys say, oh, that's so basic, you know, why are you wasting time on this? Not everyone get, everyone came out of the womb knowing all this stuff. There's a lot of young guys that don't know, so that's why I spend time on this. I was going through some of the comments on the 511 shoot, and, and the elitism on YouTube, or I guess it's anywhere on forums, all that, is just it's maddening to me. You get these guys rolling in like, good grief, you, they couldn't find some guys that actually know how to handle a rifle. Well, you know, you can't, guys can't do everything. I mean, there's, there's roles and different jobs that guys have. You know, there's, these guys are professional actors. Um, in defense of them too, one of them was a former Marine um, and one of the other guys was a wildland firefighter, volunteer, right? So cut, cut them a little bit of slack, but the grandstanding just makes me crazy. You know, I mean, how, it, how, you, what it is when these guys come on there and, and say things like that, um, they basically want to say, hey, look at me, look how cool I am. I mean, they're implying that, that they know everything and that they're the expert and everyone else is a fool and stupid. It's just, it's, it's a bad character tra trait. How would you do if you had to go down to Hollywood under the stress, stress and pressure and try to perform or try to act? You know, there's a position, there's a place for every, every guy, right? Do you enjoy movies? Do you enjoy television? Do you enjoy, you know, theater and drama? You know, that there's, that there's a lot of work that goes into that. So don't just call a guy out because he's not as good as you are at something. Um, I'll bet if you had to go walk in his shoes, you would have maybe have a little bit more respect. So just be kind. Uh, there's, you know, guys do different things. So back to the, <laughs> back to the batteries. The reason why I'm doing this is it's time to upgrade the old shoemaker because some of the newer stuff's coming with lithium batteries and, and the old lead acid uh, tenders don't work. Uh, so I ordered this one off Amazon. This is not a product endorsement. I paid the t my own 20 bucks for this. It just had the best ratings, that's all. But what these new ones do is they, they're, they're smart, right? <laughs> they're smart, so they switch over. They identify whether you're lipo or lithium uh, or lead acid, and then you don't have to worry about it. It's just kind of automatic. So we're gonna install these today. But the thing I really wanted to show you is the cool plug system. And that's these guys right here. It, it's a, I don't know what they're called. Maybe one of you guys can put that in the comments, but it's, it's just a, a little, it's just a little male female plug that works either way. Uh, and a lot of these tenders and different things are coming with these and there's all sorts of accessories for them now. For example, like a USB port. And we'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute. So if we open this up on these new tenders, we've got a couple different options here, right? Because if you've got a battery that's like buried, like let's say the John Deere, you know, it's kind of buried underneath the shroud or, you know, motorcycles where you have to take seats off and things, you know, it's just tedious, uh, time consuming. And the traditional way to do this has always been, you know, just our regular, like our, our regular big battery clips, right, that, right there. And that's fine. If you have something that uh, you don't charge very often, you know, like the forklift, you know, I'll go clamp them on there. But we have that same plug on there, right? But the cool part, is that the tenders now are coming with these guys. So we can change things up. And what we're gonna be doing today, and I'm gonna be installing on all of my equipment, uh, are these little pigtail guys. And what they do is you've got your little ring connectors that will go on the terminals, and then, that, then you have a plug that will hang out. So you can have that kind of hang out at, at a particular place, maybe under the seat or the motorcycle or some, something that's kind of inconspicuous. And then when you're ready to charge, uh, you can just plug them in. And that way, if you have multiple vehicles, you just get yourself a handful of these little guys here, and then you can plug them in and you're not having to buy a whole bunch of tenders. Right here's kind of a perfect example of what I'm talking about, you know, the hard to get to stuff on the Husky. Whenever I want to charge the battery, you know, you got to take that off and then you got to find a wrench and take the seat off. And it's just kind of tedious. And every time I get on the thing, if it's been sitting for a while, you know, it's got a dead battery. And uh, now we can, we'll hang that little pigtail on there. Pro tip, whenever you're taking stuff apart and it has lots of crazy bolts in it, thread them back in there. And then that way you always know that you get the right, right bolt. It's really nice to see lithium batteries uh, coming in new equipment. It, uh, they have so much, that was a little bit loose right there. A little Loctite on that guy. Um, we'll take these loose here. I wanna take one of these screws out and I, one of my pet peeves kind of is not having the right size ring connector. 
and putting the, the, the wrong ones on, that bothers me. So we'll cut off the ones that it came with and we'll, we'll match it up to the, to the bolt right there. Not to mention we'll cut it to the length we need. We're gonna wanna find a place that's, uh, that the plug is gonna be protected. Probably not so important on lawnmower and different things, but you don't want it out flopping and catching on stuff. And on dirt bikes, we ride in the forest. So I don't want it, I don't want it flopping or a problem. Uh, I think it would kind of fit in nicely there. So I'll make this as short as possible. That way I can take this off of there with that plug, plug and just plug it right in and that will just kind of tuck neatly. These are the connectors that I like to use. I, they seem to be, I get these on Amazon. They seem to be the same under several different company names. I don't know that makes much difference. And uh, the thing that you want, or what I really like about these guys is that they have the shrink tubing built into them. So you crimp them and then we'll take the heat gun. It's already built in so it saves you a step and then they're color coordinated for the wire. And you know, I try to buy this stuff locally at my local Napa. I've mentioned this before, but they, are, they price gouge so bad that uh, I went down there to buy some of these connectors when I was working on the van and you'd get like um, five or six in a little packet and they were like 10 bucks. Good grief, you can buy these whole thing right here which are the same, uh, ex I mean same quality as far as I can tell um, for what? You get the whole thing for 20, 25, 30 bucks. Um, I mean, I just, I, they just, I want to buy there, but they just won't let me. This is going to be a lot better. See, we've got the suitable ring connectors. That's what's nice about those kits is they come with, you know, I don't know, four or five different sizes, maybe, maybe more. Uh, you know, this obviously is not going to work right there. You have to put a washer on it and it's just, it's just not, not done correctly. Uh, I hate to cut factory plugs off, you know, cause they're always waterproof and they're always done so well, but, uh, no big deal. So we're gonna take about an inch off of these guys right here. Now this, uh, when it comes to crimping these connectors, man, you can go down a rabbit hole. There are so many different crimps and specialized deals. And I mean, you could spend a fortune getting the right, right one for the right application. Um, for, for just the common guy, just to have one in your shop, you just can't beat these guys. Uh, lots of companies make them. I think this is the channel lock one, but it's just basically got a crimp in there for uh, insulated and non-insulated. It just works so good and it's got a good nipper on the end so you can cut your wires. It's basically two tools in one and they're not, they're not expensive. I know it's not, you know, it doesn't do the proper roll and all that, but uh, um, for the common guy, it's, it's good. So we'll uh, split these here a little bit. Another nice tool to have is uh, these wire strippers. This, uh, I bought this way back in the day. It cost a fortune. I remember buying it from the Snap-on guy. But now there's lots of companies that make them. Uh, they're way cheaper. But they are so cool. It's hard to strip the, these small wires like this without damage. You, know, you can damage them really bad. So you can see inside there they have the different sizes. Um, and so you, you could just lay that in there. And how it works is, is as you squeeze it, it clamps right there and pops the, pops the housing off. They're really awesome. Uh, I would, if you're going to do any, any electrical work, like 12 volt stuff, you're going to do a van or a trailer, it's worth, it's worth it to buy them right there. Okay. Once we get that on there, bring them together, make sure you're not frayed. And then we can put our connectors on there. And what I have found is that even though these are insulated, meaning they've got the shrink tubing on there and there is a non-insulated deal there it seems to hold better if I just go ahead and use the one that has the one that's for non-insulated it's got a little it's got a little bump out right there you can see and I'll do it right on the top and make sure the wires pressed in and then give it a good these are small so you don't have to you know go get all manly on them but just give them a good crimp like that and then give it a tug for your shrink tubing, a heat gun is definitely the best. I don't know that your wife's hair dryer is going to get hot enough to do it, but if you don't have one, you can just use a lighter. This is a big lighter, but these work really good. So just start it till it gets some heat on it. And when you start to see it move, uh, rotate it. And the good ones will, uh, you'll kind of almost see like a, what looks like a little bit of silicone goo kind of come out the back. You can see it right there. It just it sucked in really nicely. I've learned to be super particular about doing, meticulous maybe is a better word, about uh, doing electrical uh, because I've done it shabbily in the, in the past and it will always bite you in the butt at the worst possible moment. Usually uh, in the middle of the night on the side of the highway uh, with trailer lights that won't turn on or something like that. So if you do it right, take a little bit of time and 
um, it, you're just not going to have problems with it. So I'll always uh, use some sort of a protective shielding. So I'll, uh, you, you can use all sorts of things. If you don't have that, at least just wrap it with electrical tape. Yeah, I know. Thanks for reminding me. It would have been better to put the shielding on before we did the crimps, right? All right, so we'll put that down there. And the shielding, of course, you know, anything, anything that's going to be rubbing on there uh, is going to give us trouble. And I always try to route your wires. You know, the factory, these guys know what they're doing when they make this stuff. You know, they have got a lot of experience. So don't just lay wires on top of stuff and, you know, because it's, it's, it's going to rub and it's going to get messed up. So if you can follow the factory loom, you're, um, you're going to be saving yourself a lot of trouble here. So this is the ECU. See how the factory wires run underneath there? There should be always enough room there. We can just tuck them under there. And now we don't have to worry about the seed or anything messing it up. And it looks clean and it looks factory-like. I was finishing that up and I was looking at those wires not going through the boots. And I'm like, that's not gonna fly for me. <laughs> so we'll just take a, take a minute. You could take a small screwdriver. Usually those boots are flexible enough where you can get the wires through there. I'll just take this little screwdriver I should have did that at the beginning. Good grief. I know better. You get in a, it's just the default to cut corners, isn't it? Just do it right the first time. Now we can put those rubber boots on the way it was intended. Now I could sleep tonight knowing that those rubber boots are back on there. Those little things. I can't tell you how many times I've done that. Cut a corner and uh, it bugs me to no end. I can't deal, live with it. And you end up going back and doing it all over again. Just do it right the first time. I think I'd learned by now. I hear the D or I heard I, this morning, and I saw the DNR helicopter uh, looking for some wildlands. Some, I think we had a lightning storm while we were in Nebraska or uh, Minnesota, and uh, but must be looking for um, uh, fire. Now we can charge the battery. We don't have to get into the seat anymore. Sorry about the background noise. I think the heart racer is barking at a bear down there. Strawb wild strawberries in, the bears are down there hoovering them up. Uh, one thing I wanted to add too, there's, you can get accessories for these things now. So like this, for example, is a USB connector. Uh, so you can just take the pigtail and throw it into your pack. If you had an emergency, um, let's say you use your phone for GPS or to call and the battery's dead, uh, you can uh, just plug this in now. This has a, these have waterproof covers on them so they won't get corroded when you're uh, washing it, whatever, uh, then you can just plug this in in an emergency and now you have a USB plug directly to your battery that you could charge your phone up. So that's kind of kind of handy. Uh, you can do cigarette lighter adapters or 12 volt power points or, or whatever. Uh, let's, but let's plug it in, see how it works. Okay, let's see what happens here. Plugged in, status, so we have red blinking, mode automatically, well, I must have automatically recognized it. Or maybe just hit it. Yeah, just got a mode switch. So we can do uh, life, LIF, uh, or lithium. Um, and then that should turn green. So that's it. Yeah, that's cool. Because then you got one, one tender uh, that can do all your batteries back and forth without mixing them up all that. So uh, that's probably about it. So I'm going to, I got to several of these pigtails. I'm going to put those on there. Um, you, you can also fuse these things. You might want to consider that. I do have some of those with fuses, but um, I'm not overly worried about it. Uh, if you shield it, you should be fine. Uh, I'll put all these little pigtails on the lawnmower and all the different things, and then uh, we can keep stuff topped off. But that's going to be pretty handy.